All right, and we're back with another painting tutorial, this time on Krondus. Uh, I'm sure he has a fancier name than that. Krondus, son of Dracothian. There it is. So yeah, we're just gonna dive right in. We're doing a we're doing a sort of paint scheme that's like the box art, but sort of I guess inspired by the box art, but not exactly like the box art. Um, we're starting with Aethermatic Blue, and while we are doing um, well, we are using Aethermatic Blue, just like we did for the um, Storm Drake Guard or Night Draconis. We're going to do some different stuff on it, so it will not be identical. He should look rather different, in fact, when we're done with him. But we shall see. We shall see. So I'm just going to do a piece at a time here. Um, I don't want to get... I don't want to try to do the entire dragon <laughs> at once with this... Uh, with the contrast paint, so I'm just gonna do like his arm first. Maybe up to like here ish. And just stop at these creases here. Because I have some experimenting to do to see how I'm gonna get the look I wanted. And so that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna <laughs> experiment on this arm. And then once I figure it out, I'll uh I'll go and do it on the rest of the figure. But yeah, starting off with this Aethermatic Blue. Make sure to get it in all the nooks and crannies here. I think that's going to end up being like a tan color, but I'm just going to paint it for now. Can always come back to it. Alright, then while this is still wet, I'm going to grab some Black Templar. And I'm just going to work it in around where these scales are. Kind of blend it down into the blue here. Like that. And sort of up here. I'm gonna blend it up. I kind of want like sort of almost like a stripe pattern coming down right here. Like that, I think. And of course, this is this will have color on it and stuff later. But for right now, I think that's what I want. So I'm just gonna do another coat, make this a little darker. Make sure it's blending with the blue appropriately, and then do the same thing up here, just a little bit darker. And then I'm going to go back to the Aethermatic Blue. And just make sure that we still have a strong blue color out here. And so this Aethermatic Blue is not the most pigmented compared to some contrast paints. So I want it to be. I want to make it as strong as we can out here to go with the blue. Or the black, rather. And I think we're going to use Null Oil on the entirety of the skin on this guy to darken down the blue a little bit. But I haven't 100% decided on that yet, so we'll have to see. I'm going to get the back of his hand. But yeah, I'm going to let this dry um, and see if it comes out the way I want it. If it does, then we will continue on doing the rest of the dragon, and I'll come back when he's all dry, and we'll move on to the next step. If it doesn't, then we'll come back, and we'll try and experiment on the other arm. Either way, I'll see you shortly. Alright, and we're back. For you, that was, you know, a fade out and a fade in, but for me, this is six hours later. But, I have the blue and the black completed. Um, and then I started to experiment with that, and then I realized I need to turn the camera on to do that. So, I'm just going to go through what I did here. So, Black Templar, like you saw, I put that all over the wings here. Or all over the 
body and down the tail and on the wings and stuff. And then here, I had the Aethermatic Blue, obviously, and then I put Null Noil over that. But then for this black fading into blue, I just used the sponge like this. Just a bit of sponge and just sponged it on. Did it in kind of a V pattern in between the wings. And then just sort of estimated it here because the wings all folded up. Then I did the same same colors down here on the leg. Faded like we did with the hands down here, except the feet are all black this time. And did over here and all that. So now we're going to move on to the belly color, which you can see there. And that is going to be the Morngast Bone. Right there. This is just going to be basically all the soft bits of the dragon. So it'll be this, the underbelly, uh, the underside of the wings, uh, his neck, and the bottom of his tail. Hopefully, this won't take quite as long as the, uh, the first step here, but we'll see. I've also noticed that there's a weird line right here on his chest. And I wonder if I put this on wrong. <laughs> well, that'll be something to explore after I finish painting this color. He may be built wrong. But you know what? Sometimes that happens. He looks fine how he's built, so we'll probably keep it like that. But it is interesting. So yeah, I'm just going around, um, making sure to follow the lines of this underbellied part here. Not painting anything that's already, or that's meant to be staying the color it is. Making mistakes as I go, getting a little bit of paint. So, I showed this on the channel before, but if you get some paint you don't want in an area, just flood the area with water and scrape it with your brush until it comes off, just like that. So yeah, I'm just going to go around, get all this painted up. I'm probably going to need two coats for a lot of this. Um, I will say, something I forgot to say earlier, is that this guy was Zenithald, so I sprayed him with Chaos Black first, cast black primer, and then just out of a rattle can, and then from an angle probably about 60 degrees or so, I sprayed him with Wraith Bound. And that helps the contrast paint look a little better, and uh, just helps the overall look of the miniature. But yeah, I'm going to finish this up. And then we'll come back, and I think we'll keep working on the wings. We're going to do some contrast on the wings on top of this Morngast bone, and then we're going to put the Morngast bone back onto the wings. Hopefully that works. We'll see when we come back. All right, and we're back, and we've got a nice coat all nice and dry now. And we're now going to move on to snakebite leather. And we're going to apply this onto all the things here on the, like, veins of his wings, I guess. And this is going to look a little weird at first, because it's going to just be like a hard line on his wings. But then we're going to come back afterward and sponge back on some uh, Morngast bone, which is what we just, or Morngast bone, what we just finished using in the previous step and uh, make it look better. But for now, snake bite leather going straight on here. Straight on like this. And we just wanna make sure that we're hitting all the cracks here that you can see on the wings. So we just wanna make sure that we get all the way in through the cracks like that. here and 
all of this up here. And the reason we put the Morngast bone on first is just so that we have that color underneath it. So everywhere that we don't end up putting this wash will just be there. And then when we go and reapply it, we won't have to do as much work. But hypothetically, you could probably just put the snake bite leather here over the primer. And it would probably work relatively the same. But this is just the way I thought to do it the first time. So this is how we're doing it. So I'm just going to carry on doing this all over this guy's wings. And then we will... I'll either let this dry completely and then come back and we'll do the next step with the Morngast. Or we'll come back while this is still drying and we'll do the gold or something on the armor. We'll have to see. Either way, I'm going to go finish this up and we'll come back and do the next step. All right, we're back. And as you can see, I've repainted. Didn't like how that was working out, so we're going for another route this time. We're gonna end up with the panels looking like this. I did some experimenting between, between clips here, but this is what we're gonna end up with. I think this will work out better than what I had before. And so we're gonna start with Agrax Earthshade. And I'm just gonna put this all over the wings here. Just like we did with the snake bite leather, except this stuff is much lighter and I think will work out better in the long run. So I'm just applying this with a wet brush, getting the brush wet and then dipping it in the null or the Agrax Earth Shade, and then just getting it all over the, the wings here, getting up any pooling that happens. Getting it all over this, this color. This uh, Morgas bone. Making sure it gets down into those cracks and crevices nicely. Not worried about the streaking currently because we're going to come back over and repaint that. But yeah, I'm going to do this with the rest of this wing, and then I'll do it with the other wing. And then we'll let this dry completely. And then we'll come back for real this time and sponge back on some uh, Morga or Morgast bone or possibly a lighter color. We'll have to see. Either way, I'll be back as soon as this is dry. All right, and we're back. And that is mostly dry. Now we're going to come in with Flayed One Flesh. And we're just going to get a piece of sponge here. This is a piece of pluck foam, but you know any old sponge or foam or whatever should work just fine. And I'm just going to dip it in the paint, dab it on the paper towel a little bit, and then come in and just start on camera, please. Just start dabbing it in here in between or in the middle of these wing flaps until we have some nice solid color built up fading out to the edges it's solid in the middle there we go and we'll do the, those little ones are the tricky ones these bigger ones are a little easier solid color here in the middle and then fading out onto the sides here spin my sponge around a little bit just tap it out will take some practice. I'm still not that great at it, but I think I can get okay results with it. Come back into the middle here. Get our color a little more solid right here in the middle. All right. 
right. So there we go. That's basically what we're going for. I think I'll make this one a little more solid. Right here. Just doesn't doesn't look quite right. Get some more in there and fade it out a little closer to the edges. There we go. So, I'm just going to do that to the rest of the wing here, and then to the other wing, obviously. The other wing will be a little trickier. I'll probably have to paint with a paintbrush to get in there. But this is basically the effect we're looking for here. Might need a second coat to more closely match this one that I already did. We'll see. But in any event, once that's done, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, and we're back, and the wings are done. I'm not completely happy with how they turned out, but... For the purposes of this video, I'll call it a day on them. So now, we're going to go on to the claws. And so for that, we're going to apply some Iron Hand Steel to them first. Um, we want them, we're going to paint them black, ultimately, but... We want them to be sort of shiny black. So before we paint them with Black Templar, we're going to paint them with Iron Hand Steel. So this is just going to be the claws on the wingtips and the claws like on his legs or on his hands and feet. Just going to go around base coating them all. So I'll do that and then I'll come back and we'll either apply the uh, we'll either apply the black to these after the silver is dry or we'll come back and start working on the armor or some other detail of him. Either way, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, we're back and the claws are all silvered up. Um, I'll also point out that his teeth there, there's hair on his head, the teeth, there's a tooth right there that sticks out and one on the other side, I also did those in uh, silver as well. Now we're gonna paint the hair and for that, I'm going to use Pterodon Turquoise. And hopefully this is the color I want. I think it is. And we're just going to paint this on all of the hair, or fur, or whatever it is. That uh, is on him. I remember, I think actually on a stream on this channel at some point, I learned the difference between hair and fur. And now I don't remember what it is. Hair might be individual follicles and fur is different somehow? I don't remember. I won't pretend to know the difference. But I am going to put this on all of the fur slash hair. And I'm actually going to take some of this and... A bit of a mistake I'd made here with the... Uh, with some of the... some of the white there and I'm just gonna do that and blend it up into the wing shows up a lot more on camera than it does in real life so in real life that that will do uh, all right so I'm just gonna continue doing the fur here he's got more under his arm and under his stomach there I'm just gonna get what's on his face here and this contrast is dark enough that any of the previous colors that we've gotten on top of this can this can just go right over it, no problem. So I'm just going to finish this up. And then we'll come back, and I think for real this time, we will get to start on his armor. Uh, I'm just going to get his eyebrow real quick, and mention, don't forget his eyebrow. Pretty neat that he has an eyebrow there. All right, so yeah, I'll let all this dry. Well, I'll finish this, then let it dry, and then we'll come back and for real this time, start on the armor. All right, and we're back, and the hair is all nice and blue. So now we're gonna move on to his armor, and we're gonna start with Retributor armor. This is my go-to for Stormcast armor. And we're gonna put it basically all over his armor. Um, the 
the trim and stuff is going to be silver. So we'll leave that. I mean, if some gold gets on it, it's no big deal, but we won't try our hardest to get full coverage on those areas. But everywhere else, we will. And for armor plates and stuff like this, we want to make sure we get the sides of the plates here. There we go. And the other side. Oh! Already got a mistake. Rinse my brush off. Just come in here and scrape. And scrape. And we're good. Just get these little bubbles off there. And we're all set. Good. Got rid of that gold swipe. It should not have been there. And now we'll carry on and do the side here. Get those two little buckles. There we go. All right. Just get the rest of the armor here. So that is this uh, this main panel here, obviously. Uh, but then we have these two to do, and then we have horn tips. And I think that's it. Yeah, that is it. So not too much of this gold to do on him, but uh, you know, certainly enough to pop out and act as a good accent color, so I'm all about that. Um, one thing I will say that will be different to you from yours versus mine, unless you do the same conversion I did. Uh, conversion is a strong word in this instance, but I've got the little dragon right there from the Vampire Lord, the special edition Vampire Lord that just came out. The woman who you could either have pointing or holding a dragon. Uh, mine is pointing. Did I do a video on her? I can't remember if I did a video on her or not. I think I did. Anyway. Um, that's the dragon from her. And I just kind of sculpted him a little bit so that he's laying right on the swoop of the uh, of the armor there. So, big dragon's got a little pal. Um, if, like I said, that'll be different from from yours, but if you wanted to make that same conversion, you absolutely could. I'll be painting him later, and so all that is to say, if you end up do doing the same thing, uh, don't paint him gold, even though he is sitting on the armor. We want to... I want to contrast him later, so... I will leave him the Wraithbone for now. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this gold. Uh, sometimes over Wraithbone, gold likes to not cover so well, so we might need a second coat. I'll evaluate that after I get this first one. But regardless, once that gold is all dry, I'll come back and we'll do the silver. Alright, and we're back and our gold is all golded up. And we're ready to move on to the silver now. And I've said this in a couple of videos, but I'm using Cobalt Alchemy. Uh, this is just Grey Knight Steel by a different name. I'm out of Grey Knight Steel, and my local shop hasn't gotten a restock yet. So I'm just using Cobalt Alchemy from Scale75 as a replacement. Uh, if you have Grey Knight Steel, it will work just fine. So this is going to be on all the trim and decoration on his armor. So I'll start off with the easy one right here, this face of Sigmar right here in the middle is going to be this color. Brush is a little too wet. This paint is a little thinner than GW's normally, so a little extra water on the brush and you know, all of a sudden we're really, really thin out here. So I'm just going to get this on the rest of this crest here. We will need a second coat of this. Uh, Grey Knight Steel will probably cover in one go, but uh, this Scale 75 paint's a little thinner, so we will need a second coat of this. Alright. I'm going to do the decoration on here. So this little this sort of tail ends of the comet 
here. And then all the way around. We're gonna this middle ring is gonna stay gold, but around it is gonna be silver. Like that. And then the trim here at the bottom. trim at the top as well and then the uh, same on the other fan brace just the, the arm armor I'm pretty sure those are called fan braces obviously we'll need a second coat a second coat there and then we'll do this crest back here and that'll be the silver done. So I will finish this up, do the second coat, let that dry, and we'll come back. And we'll be pretty much onto the last couple details before he's done. All right, we're back and our silver is all done. Got a second coat on there and it's looking great. So now we're gonna do four steps in one here. Uh, first, we're going to use some Doomble Brown around the eyes. We're going to use the second color later on the eyes, but for now, just Doomble Brown. We're going to put Black Templar on the claws that we painted silver earlier. We're going to put Blood Angels Red on the Little Dragon. And we're going to use some Eshin Gray Dry Brushed onto the black. And we're going to start with that. So, I'm just going to take my Eshin Gray. Get some on the brush. Wipe a lot of it off. And then we're just going to come down here. And we'll start with these scales on the back here, and we're just going to dry brush down. Being pretty light with it, we don't want to, we don't want any giant streaks, we just want a little bit of definition on some of these black parts. It may not even show up in the video, to be honest, because they will be so light. But. I can see them in person. I promise you they're there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do this across the raised areas of the black. So like up on these things. I'm gonna need some more paint here. Wipe again, wipe most of it off. And then come back. And just go around dry brushing. These right there, and these right here. Down here on the hands and feet a little bit. So I'm not trying to be 100% um, like every single part of the black needs to have this gray on it. Just going around in some places and putting this gray on just to break it up a little bit. Put it there. And then on this other leg, there we go. And I think, get it there, get a little bit here, yeah. this arm as well. Get those, get these. Alright, again, I'm not sure how much it actually will show up in the video, but I promise, in person, it makes a heck of a difference. So then... Actually, I lied. We're going to do five steps in one. We're going to take this, Ulthwin Gray, and we're going to do the same sort of thing here. Just take some, wipe most of it off. Just want, just want, uh, you know, a brush to have some paint, but not tons. And we're just going to come right down here like this on just the raised edge on his back. And come down just like that. And we'll go about that far, I think. That was probably a little too far. So we'll just wipe that back off. There we go. And there we go. And, you know, I said we were going to do all these steps in one, but I think I will let this dry, take a look at it, maybe come back and do another pass with the gray, 
Then we'll come back and we'll do those other three colors. All right, we're back. And for real this time, we're going to do a couple colors in one. So we're going to start with Blood Angel's Red. And this is just going to go on the little dragon that's sitting up here on his collar. Just like this. Trying not to bump the, the gold, if possible. And, you know, if this is, like, the, the baby dragon, maybe it should be the same color, but putting it in red like this will help it stick out and actually get seen as a conversion. If it was the same color, it would just kind of get lost in there, so we'll stick with red. Then, we're going to do Black Templar, and this is going to be on the Silver Claws. So we wanted uh, the claws to be black, but we wanted them to be a little bit shiny, so they stuck out from the um, skin. So we painted them silver first. Just going to go around, making them black. There aren't too many, so we'll just go through them real quick here. Just make sure to get all the sides of each one of them. There we go. And then the ones on the feet. There we go. Other foot. And I'm not sure if it shows up in the video, but yeah, there you go. As you can see, the skin and the claws are the same color, but completely different finishes because of that silver we put on underneath. And that is exactly what we wanted. We wanted them to both be black, but for them to be able to be told apart. So... Go. And then we just have the ones on the wing tips here. Just knock them out. When you're doing the ones on the wing tips, be careful about the, the splatter that can happen if you flick your brush down off the end of these. You, know, you can get little black paint specks where you don't want it. So we just gotta go slow and not go crazy aggressive with our brush movements. We get these. And this one over here. And then flip it around to get the reverse. Gotta reach all the way in here these couple and then the last one is way down here all right and then the last step we're gonna do in this little segment here is gonna be first of all thinner brush second of all Dumble brown so with this we're gonna go in and let's see if I can point this out to you. So you can see in here he's got his eye right there. But then this little area of skin around his eye is what we're going to be painting Doomble Brown. So we're going to come in here. And this whole little section in here is going to be this color. Including the eyeball itself, but this whole little part in there. And then we'll do it on the other side as well. careful not to get it on anywhere else in the surrounding area. Alright, there we go. 
So we're gonna let that dry, all the colors we just used, and then we'll come back and put some null oil on the metallics and paint his eyeballs. All right, we're back and everything is drying or dried. And we're gonna move on to null oil now. And we're gonna put this all over the metallics. So the, the armor basically. Get it all worked in there to the nooks and crannies. Make sure, especially to get it in this text here. I definitely want it in there. And then in all the recesses of the armor here. And on the back of the armor plates as well, down here. There we go. And then on Sigmar himself here this plate. You're just making sure, A, that you don't flick the paint onto any other surface, B, that you don't let it pool anywhere that you don't want it to, and then just making sure to work it into all the recesses. So you can always put it on thicker than you need and then move it around after that, which is exactly what we're doing. sure it's getting in all the crevices maybe a little too thick in there we'll just pull it out a little bit a little thicker up on top of him there we go a little too thick there maybe not thick enough over here you have quite a bit of time to play with it um, before it dries so don't worry about it too much if you put too much on we're also going to put it on the dragon here darken him down a little bit it's just a little too bright. And then all this stuff back here. We wanna get a good good shading of all this. And then flip this around. And get all this in here. Especially, again, there's some text up here. You want to make sure to get that nice and shaded. There we go. And then we just have to get inside the armor there. And in here. Good. Alright. And then we'll do these horns up here. And there's only black around here, so we can be a little more wild and crazy with it up here so if it just goes in the black then that's fine make sure to get the back of these spikes as well make sure you get the errant bristle out of your paintbrush get the backs of these horns There. And down there. Alright. Oh, and then this last armor plate right here. Making sure we get in all the nooks and crannies. I'm trying to decide if I want to do Nuln Oil or something else, and I think I'm going to try Nuln Oil on the skin here. Yep, that was the correct choice. I was going to do a more brown, probably like Skeleton Horde or something, but I think I like how the, uh, the Nuln Oil works with this color and works with the rest of the, the colors that we have on this guy, so... We're just going to go ahead and put it all in here. So I'll go ahead and finish up this null oil all over the skin. Get it all worked in to all the little scale lines and all that. And get it in as like some equivalent of panel washing, even though I wouldn't call these panels necessarily. But just to make sure to get it all worked in, give us a good dividing line between colors. It's always a benefit of 
Nuln oil. In there, and then once that's dry, we will come back and do the last couple steps before we finish them up. So once this is dry, we'll do that. All right, we are back and our null oil is drying on here. Just gonna grab a little bit of the pooling that we had there. Um, and now we're gonna do a couple of little details before we call this guy done. So we're gonna start with Pink Horror and we're just going to highlight our little dragon with this real quick. Just grab this guy. And we'll just do some little edge highlights. The edge of his wing here. His cheek. The top of his ear. His leg here. And then his tail. And maybe the top of him right there. There we go. Nothing major, just to pop them out a little bit. Then, we're going to take some Fire Dragon Bright and do his eyes. Uh, the little dragon and the big dragon, I should say. So we'll grab the little dragon first. Just be very careful. And grab his eye. And then the big dragon, we're going to do the same thing. Very careful. Yeah. And then we'll do the same to the other side. There we go, first try. Alright. Then, we're going to take some Black Templar. And we're going to line his head. Um, this is a technique that um, I use sometimes when I don't feel like super detailing out the rest of a miniature is you just focus on the head, since that's up at the top and where most people are going to look. And we're just going to put some extra effort into the head. So we're going to line his mouth here with Black Templar. And we're going to line right here between the fur and the scale pattern there. Just like that. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So his mouth right through there. And if you get too much on, just wipe it off like that. Since that recess is so deep. We'll do this crevice here. Like that. Then we're going to do his nostrils. Right here. And on the other side as well. Right in there. And just come down to the point. And then, these lines here, which are already pretty dark, but we're going to make them a little darker. And right here, behind his eyebrows. There we go. And then, let's see. And then it's just kind of about evaluating, just kind of looking at his face and see what needs to be done. Just to make him have a little more character, and I think we'll go down right here, and right here. So, let's see. It's kind of just at your own discretion, wherever you think some lines might help him out. I think we might be done. Make this a little stronger right in there. Yeah. Alright, I think that'll be it for the black lining. And now we're going to take some Baharoth Blue, one of my favorite colors. And we're just going to do a little bit of edge highlighting. So, same thing we just did, but instead of in recesses, this will be on edges. So, let's see, we're going to come right here, straight down his face on here. Like that. On the 
these little bits above his nostril here. We'll do those. And these lines that are sort of formed on this, whatever part of his face this is, I guess his cheek sort of. side as well. There we go. And then I think I'm going to do his upper lip here. Just being careful not to go over the recesses. I'm just doing the, the high points there. Flip it over and do the same thing on this side. go and then I think I'll just do these right across here point of the brush was getting a little wonky just gonna fix that up real quick and then we'll continue just doing these lines right across his head here do it for this guy. Um, I'm just I'm just evaluating see what else maybe we might do. But I think that'll be it. So there he is, Krondus. Um right now he's so big um that it's hard to really get him in frame, but right now you should be seeing him with the base done. Um I don't usually include the bases in the main model videos, I just do the model. Um, the base will be really simple though. This is a commission and the guy I'm doing it for wants to match Krondus' base to the rest of his army, obviously. Uh, so I'll just put a couple simple colors on here and this will probably just be dark brown when you see it, or when you're seeing it right now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with him overall. Not super happy with the wings but the more i look at them the more i like them so that's fine but happy with him overall and he should be an excellent addition to any stormcast army but thank you everybody for watching um i just recently made it to 1000 subscribers so i'm very happy about that thank you everybody for that if you are subscribed or thank you for helping me get to 2000 if you're not yet either way i appreciate everybody who watches and I will see you next time.